Breaking news, and it's sad news from the NFL. Hall of Fame head coach John Madden has passed away at the age of 85. Madden led the Oakland Raiders to a Super Bowl 11 championship over the Minnesota Vikings. He is perhaps most well known as color commentator for the NFL, working for every major network during his broadcasting career. He retired from broadcasting after the 2008 NFL season to spend more time with his family, a legendary broadcaster, coach, and of course, face of EA Sports video games as well. Let's welcome in CBS NFL insider Jason LaConfora. And Jason, I guess it probably depends on your age, but how do you suppose John Madden is going to be most remembered? Well, I just think he'll be remembered as one of the faces of the NFL. Um, you you know, you start playing that game of Mount Rushmore. I mean, if you're talking an NFL Mount Rushmore, given um, how his rise in various capacities from coach to broadcaster to video game innovator to um, influencer, right, before we had yeah. social media, you can't trace the rise of the NFL from – Chasing, you know, boxing and chasing Major League Baseball to becoming the absolute, you know, 24-7, 365 day a year monolith that it is, the dominant uh, sort of shining light in professional sports in this country, trumping any other league, any other entity. I don't know that you can tell that story without John Madden, and, and I don't know how many people maybe were quite as influential as he was in growing the game, being inclusive, bringing people into the game, um, being the type of broadcaster who made you want to learn more, made you want to watch more, um, who was always teaching but never in a condescending way. I, I just feel like there was a warmth to him, and, and I unfortunately did not get to know him well, but um, a lot of people I work with at CBS did work with him in various capacities. As you said, he worked for all the major networks, um, truly beloved, truly um, adored, and someone who, frankly, this league owes a tremendous debt of gratitude for all the different ways he was involved in sort of the growth uh, of the NFL. And no doubt about it. You know, it's interesting because EA was actually turned down by Joe Montana initially, and then they approached John Madden in 1982. Madden saw it as an opportunity to educate fans about the game, which was apropos because if you watched him as a broadcaster, game in and game out, didn't you always get a sense that you were learning something about the game in the NFL when he had a broadcast? One of the game's great teachers, and you, you look at what he did leading, teaching, coaching professional athletes with the Raiders. Um, and remember, I mean, if, if he had stuck with that longer, who knows where the, the overall net win totals and Super Bowls would be. Um, people forget how young he was when he became a head yeah. coach and what an iconoclast he was. And unfortunately for him, he's doing it at a time when he's up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But you, you think of, of how he melded those teams, how – he embraced all those different personalities and got that thing to work. And I think it kind of um, colored the way he broadcast in the booth. Again, I'll say it again, how, how inclusive he was, how he brought everyone to the table, how he, he taught you in a way that um, sparked you rather than kind of shamed you for not knowing what you know. And uh, he could do things without using buzzwords and not getting caught up in you know, the, the, the nomenclature of the day, it was more just explaining the concepts and making you understand why that player was positioned where he was and what should have happened on any given play. And then you're right, the game was an extension of that. And it became what it is now where kids are literally learning what football's all about by calling plays for themselves, you know, in that Madden franchise. Uh, the commercials, you know, I mean, I'm I'm pushing 50 years old. Yep. I, I mean, the whole, you know, great taste, less filling. I mean, th those commercials, okay. you'll remember if you saw them, if you were of that age, you'll remember that forever. Even the tough act it's enacted, boom. I mean, yeah. anything he was a part of tended to sort of glow and tended to blow up. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. it really, he, he spanned, there were so many memories you have of him, but in different branches of his career. And I want to go back to the coaching because you saw it there on the full screen with regards to his record, 103, 32, and 7. He was a terrific head coach who had a terrific record. Do you suppose if he ever got back into coaching, that would have traveled on with him in a sense? I know he was a great broadcaster, but he left coaching in an early age as well. Yeah, yeah, got into it early, left early. Uh, I, look, I think he would have been successful in, in another era if he wanted to. Like, just just think of the way a Peyton Manning talks about the first time he did a game that John Madden broadcast. Like, he talks about it with the reverence yeah. of his first NFL win or of, you know, his first Super Bowl win. Like, it was that big of a deal. And, and the way – I mean, coaching ultimately is teaching, and, and, and it's about the ability – to get a collective to buy in and and be more than themselves. And people would run through walls for this guy. So I have no doubt that if at some point in the late 80s or whatever, he wanted to get back into coaching, um, especially as we got into the era in the early 90s where free agency was happening, who wouldn't want to play for John Madden? I mean, it was a bigger deal to a lot of players to make the all-Madden team than it was to see if the sports writers wrote you into the AP right all pro team or not and you know your your incentives are based on pro bowl and all pro but i can tell you to a lot of guys of that era you know through the, the 90s into the 2000s if you made if you made all madden that added more cachet in the locker room than you know necessarily whether you were pro bowl or all pro Hey, cbs nfl insider jason lock on for remembering the great john madden jason thanks for some insight my pleasure thank you john madden Legendary broadcaster, NFL coach, and again, face of EA Sports video games, has passed away at the age of 85. More about HQ after this. Breaking news into HQ, Hall of Fame head coach John Madden has passed away at the age of 85. Madden led the Oakland Raiders to the Super Bowl 11 championship title over the Minnesota Vikings. He's perhaps most well known as color commentator for the NFL, working for every major network during his career. He retired from broadcasting after the 2008 season to spend more time with family. And of course, he's been the face of EA Sports video games as well. You're talking about the all Madden team as well as the Madden cover. Let's get some more perspective on a legendary career that it was bringing in Pete Prisco and Brian McFadden. And, and gentlemen, I'm, it's, it's great to have you both in here to get different perhaps insight. Really, Madden really spanned generations in terms of his impact in the NFL. I'm curious as to what you both remember him most as. And I'll start with you, Pete. Well, I remember him most as a football coach. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was, I was, uh, I'm old enough to remember when he was a coach, and the Raiders of his time played with a swagger and a nastiness and a violence, and they were free spirited, but they were well coached. And the guy never had a losing season. Never. He was 33 years old when he took the job and did not have a losing season, won a Super Bowl, and he would have been truly special had he continued as a coach, but he retired at the age of 42. But his teams were so well coached, they were fun to watch, there was a mystique about him. He allowed his players to be who they were, and yet when it came time to work, he made them do the work and they were well coached. So I have nothing but the utmost respect for what he did after his career. And I was there, I witnessed. Tom Brookshire and Pat Summerall were the generational tandem for years. And when Brookshire left, they wondered, well, what would Summerall do? Madden seamlessly took over that uh, and became the guy along with Pat Summerall. When you saw Pat Summerall and John Madden together, you knew it was a big game. So people remember him for that. I get it. I do too. But don't forget about his coaching. He was one hell of a coach. Well, me personally, I remember John Madden as, you know, a commentator, one of the best commentators to ever do it. Growing up, my top two commentators when it came to football, collegiately, it was Keith Jackson. Whenever Keith Jackson was calling a game on Saturday, you knew it was a big deal. And when John Madden was calling a game on Sunday, it was a big deal. And I remember the first time John Madden called one of my NFL games. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was Super Bowl XL in Detroit against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, playing in the Super Bowl was already a big deal. But just knowing that John Madden was up top 
and was ready to hit you with his infamous boom or doink reference, it was like, man, I finally made it. John Madden is actually going to say my name and hopefully he say it for a good reason. But regardless, John Madden was going to utter my name out of his mouth. Yeah. And then, of course, when it came to the video game, he changed the life of video games. I remember the first Madden I got, I think it was 1988 or 89. And ever since then, I was consistently purchasing the Madden video game. And I was once called the Madden guru because I was that good because I devoted so much time to playing this video game. And he will forever be remembered when it comes to anything football related, NFL related, you know, commentary, uh, the ultimate, you know, first classman when it comes to what he provided for the sport and for our lives. Interesting that you say that, BMAC, because in 1982, he begrudgingly accepted that role as a face of EA Sports, saw it as an opportunity to educate <coughs> fans about the game. And I'm curious about your thoughts, both of you, on the impact he's had, whether it's broadcasting, whether, as Pete, you mentioned, coaching the record 103, 32, and 7, or whether it is on video games. The fact that the common thread was always about educating the fan to the game. Did you see it as that, Pete? Yeah, I did, particularly as a broadcaster. I mean, he, may, he tried to make it easy uh, for the fan out there. He, you know, he used his drawings and, and his designs, and he, he was the first guy to really use the telestrator and made it a thing, and, and the boom and the pow and the wow. And I remember one game when he circled the uh, church steeple for some reason. I mean, he always made it fun and interesting, uh, and he did it with an ease, and, and that was the best thing about him. He explained it easily, and, and when, you know, there's a lot of people, that, football's a complicated game, and there's a lot of people that are casual fans, and John Madden had an ease about him, made it so you understood what he was talking about, even if you were a novice fan, and, and you know, when people watch the Super Bowl, there's a ton of novice people watching the game. He made it easy when he did the game to understand what was going on. His impact will be felt, A, as the coach, like I said, B, as the, as the broadcaster, and Madden. Look, everybody bought the Madden game. I'm not a huge video game, but I bought the first one because I love the NFL. And so, uh, yeah, but his biggest impact for me, obviously broadcasting because it spanned the longest time. But don't forget about him, like I said before. Forget about him as a coach because, man, when you watch the Oakland Raiders play, you knew they were going to hit you in the mouth and they were going to be fun and push the envelope a little bit, and it was always going to be a little chippy. And, and BMAC was a Steelers player, but, man, those wars with the Raiders and Steelers back in the day before you got there, my gosh, they were violent. Hey, hey BMAC, as a player, there's All-Pro, there's Pro Bowl, and then there's making the All-Madden team. How much did it mean to you to make that team? Oh, if you made the All-Madden team, that was a bigger deal than making All-Pro a Pro Bowl. Uh, Madden was like the godfather of the game. And if he recognized you as being one of the best players in, in, in your position, at your position, it was a big deal. It was a big deal because Pete talked about how influential he was as a coach. He was so knowledgeable of the game. His instincts was always there. He was able to explain it, being able to educate you as a player or as a fan. And when he left the sideline and went up top, he just had a, 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 a better view of everything that was associated with the NFL. So no question, if you made his team, if he singled you out as one of the best players at your position, that was huge. That was, uh, that, that was something that, that guys look forward to because the respect that he had from players that were currently players, uh, the respect that he had from coaches, his peers. I mean, people respected John Madden before being involved in the NFL. I had respect for John Madden when I was in college, when I was in high school, sure. because he was able to touch me in many different ways, not just from what he did on the sideline, but I played his video game. That was a big deal. I had to get the, the latest Madden. Whoever was on the Madden cover, that was a big deal. It was a talked about story. Now we even devote shows to Madden rankings. Think about that. Think about how long he's been removed from the NFL, but every year we all talk about Madden rankings. Yeah, no that's doubt. the respect that he gets and that's the respect that he deserves. Generational, generational. Pete, I'm, I'm curious because you, you touched on the fact that, you know, he retired at a young age, the age of 42. I mentioned the record as head coach winning Super Bowl 11. Are you surprised? Because you see it so often where coaches get back in the game. Are you surprised he never got back on the sidelines in the NFL? 
Well, I, I think back in the day, you were a little surprised, but once he got on with his career, there was no going back for him. He, he thoroughly enjoyed doing the games on TV. He thoroughly enjoyed being out and about in the, you know, to see things and see the countryside. And, and you know, it's interesting because you guys talk about him as a, 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 you know, with the all Madden team and everything else. John Madden could make a reputation back in the day. You know, remember Moose Johnston was the fullback on the Cowboys? Most people wouldn't have paid attention to Moose Johnston. They just wouldn't have because he was the fullback. He made him a thing. Mike Allstott, when he was running the football and he was the fullback in Tampa Bay, he made him a thing. And that's the kind of influence John Madden had as a broadcaster. But as a coach, had he continued coaching, he would have been one of the all-time greats. He's one of the all-time greats now, but he would have been one of the truly great ones. Think about if he had coached another 15 years, what that record would have been what his uh, you know, influence on the game would have been from a coaching standpoint. He was special. He got the job when he was a young man. Uh, he had a lot of good football left in him if he had continued to coach. But he took a different path, and you know yeah. what? Worked out fine for him. Yeah, no doubt, Pete. Perhaps he touched the masses more in a volume standpoint by staying with broadcasting all those years, the legendary career it was. Our thanks to Pete Prisco and Brian McFadden with insight on the legendary career and life that was for John Madden. The Hall of Famer has passed away at the age of 85.